In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today's gospel it's the conversation of the Lord with his disciples before his betrayal, after the mystical supper. So, as you see, he is preparing them for this unfortunate event because at, the, at first, we see that the disciples, they did not understand him. Why he had to go through that. And he is pointing the reason of why he had to go through his willingly passion because there wasn't another way to pay the price for our sins and especially for the first sin of our forefathers Adam and Eve and he is saying that the Lord of this world is coming the Lord of this world is coming. So, about whom he is talking? About the, the devil. The Satan. See, he was rushing. Because he had nothing against Christ. He got Judas to betray him. He got all the Pharisees. The priests and the elders of the Jewish people. He got them on his side. But he did not have anything against Christ. So he was rushing just to crucify him. To get rid of him. Because he thought that by crucifying him, he is going to be done. And he will reign forever. Reign forever. But, unfortunately for him, unfortunately for us. He misinterpreted the messages of the prophets. So, because the prophets had foretold about his coming, right? What they say about the time of Messiah, that his peace is going to be with his people and he's going to be the king of the peace but again they misunderstood the message because they were they were waiting for an earthly king as they were under the roman empire under their occupation so they were looking for an earthly king that will get rid of them and conquer other countries so this is what they were waiting for. But see, the Lord is saying, I give you my peace. And let, let my peace be with you. So after the resurrection, he entered through the locked doors. Peace be with you. I give you my peace. So what is the Lord's peace? You know, it's like in uh, the translation... From Hebrew, peace is shalom. Right? So, he is that shalom that the Jewish are talking even in our days. But they missed this shalom. They missed the peace. Because they crucified him. They betrayed him. So, and when he is saying that I leave you my peace, I, I gotta go. And if I go, it will benefit you. Because they wanted him to stay with them, the apostles, right? But he is assuring them that it's better for them and for the entire world that he will leave. 
he will go, he said, I have to go to my father. And then the comforter will be with you. So see the comforter is that peace that the Lord left with us. And he said that this peace is going to stay with us to, till the end of times. All right. So now that each one of us that are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, we received his grace, we received his peace. Now we have to keep it. How do we keep this peace within us, inside our soul? We keep it by following his commandments. And the greatest of all commandments, we know that is love. Because God is love. So everything is based, all the entire creation is based on love. And the salvation is an act of love. His crucifixion, his sacrifice, is an act of love towards his creation. And his commandments is an act of love, of love for us. Because he couldn't accept our body. But he, 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 was, he wasn't, he didn't get anything from that. But you see, when you love much, you do much, right? So, like, for example, I was reading a story a young couple, both in college, they got in love. They were in the third year of college. They decided to marry, and they married. So at some point, they thought that she was pregnant because she had some issues, but unfortunately, she wasn't. And they were happy at the moment that because they thought what, what we're going to do now third, third year would have one more year and but they graduated they moved on in life and uh, they couldn't have children and when they got to the doctor after years sadly they told them that she has cancer and soon she's gonna die so they went to different doctors to get the second and third and fourth and fifth and tenth opinion and uh, one of the doctors told them instead of running from doctor to doctor to hear whatever you, what you want to hear uh, you should have started the uh, uh, to uh, the process of him, chemo, chemo and whatever. So they started very, very late. So she was pretty much uh, like almost more, more dead than alive. And uh, the doctors uh, said, we don't understand how you're still alive. You should have been dead a long time ago. But she was still living. Said, we cannot keep you longer in the hospital, so you have to go home. Now her husband came to pick her up from the hospital. And he, he came to pick her up with a car, which she had no idea that he had a car. We never had a car. So when she, he, when he was driving, he didn't say anything, he just was driving. And she saw that they're not going home, and she asked him where we're going. And he didn't answer. Well, she thought that he is going to leave her uh, some house for people in the last stage, you know, to die there. But he just drove in, uh, in the forest and he took her and left in the forest to die there. So 
And she said, why you're doing this? I said, don't you understand that uh, your place is taken a long time ago? I, I no longer need you. You're a burden for me. So she just closed her eyes and was crying and praying to God just to take her. And at some point, she felt somebody pulling her, but she was so skinny, it was easy to carry her. And as she, she was jogged on the ground, she heard a, a voice saying, what, what you bringing again? And uh, when, when she opened the eyes, it was a man, tall, with beard. So, she, and she, he looked, oh my God, she's, she's alive. And he said to, uh, she, she said, oh yeah, I'm still alive. I, I, I thought that God will have mercy on me and take me, but he didn't yet. I'm still waiting for him. So he took her in the house and he started preparing for her different uh, tea every day on plants. And in a couple of months, she completely was cured. She, st she started eating again. She got some weight. And uh, she divorced from her husband and married this man that rescued her. And after one year, they had a beautiful son. So you see the result of love and devotion. Even though everybody, the signs gave up, said that there is no hope for her, her husband, throw her in the forest, left her a way to die. But Lord, which has love for us, send this man that took, took care, again, out of love. This was an act of love towards God's creation. Even though later on they, fe they fell in, in love, but at first you couldn't even Understand what is that? It was bones just covered with skin, right? So we see what love can do. Love can change our lives. And this is, my dear ones, what is missing from today's world. Love. We miss completely the meaning of love. So there is no acts of love in this world. It's everything about money, resources, and nothing else. But look at today's apostle. Paul, after preaching so many years, he came to Caesarea. He was going to Jerusalem, even though he knew that the Jewish are looking to get hold of him and kill him. And the prophet came in the house of Philip that he stopped and said, the Holy Spirit is saying that this man is going to, the Jewish are going to get hold of him and send him to Rome and kill. So, and when his disciples, his followers were begging him, why you're going to Jerusalem? You know that they are going to kill you. I said, why, why are you doing this to me? I'm going to do this for the love of my Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't he do the same for us, for all of us? So I will accept gladly death for him. This is in today's apostle. So, and we, with the smallest difficulty that we are facing, we 
are so angry, even with God. How many people, when they have difficulties, they have problems, they have illnesses, they are cursing God. Why to me? They are arguing with God. Why should I go through this? There are worse people. So see, the ego kicks in from within us. So many people that is bad and doing bad things, and they are okay. And I'm a good person. See, we think about ourselves that we are actually good. <clears throat> When Jesus himself was approached by, by that young, young Pharisee saying, good teacher, said, there, no, there is no one good except God. But he didn't recognize in his face the Son of God. So that, that's the problem. But we, for us, knowing that he is the Son of God, he is the Savior. So much more we should accept him in our life. And as you saw in, in this gospel that he was talking to them and preparing them that they, they will have to accept these things. They will go, will go through these difficulties, through persecution, through pain. But see, through this, we are getting tested, but we are becoming stronger or weaker. It depends on each one's heart. So it depends on our relationship with God, on our love for God and for his creation. Right? So this is what we have to think and focus on from today's gospel. Pretty much the entire gospel is based on that, on love and sacrifice. Are we ready to sacrifice ourselves for God and for our neighbor, for God's creation? These are the questions that we have to address to ourselves, each one of us. At the end of, of the day, we, are, we have to present ourselves before God and make an analysis what we did today right so and confess the lord not because he doesn't know he know but because we have to recognize our weaknesses and to confess our weaknesses and to ask him to stay on our side and to give us strength and to lead us as he did in, in today's gospel to his, with his disciples. So let us, my dear ones, let us receive the love that the Lord gave, the light that he gave us through his divine incarnation, through his crucifixion, resurrection, ascension into heaven because that was the whole plan the salvific plan for towards his creation and the top of his creation is his image and likeness which is us so if we are god's creation so Shouldn't we be like him? So that's our goal to reach theosis, to become like God's. So the, the result of his divine incarnation should be our theosis. But this again is not going to be granted. We have to earn it. We have to work towards it. As I said other times, you want to become a doctor or a scientist or an engineer, you have to earn that degree, right? Nobody's going to grant it to you because you have beautiful eyes or face or whatever. No, you have to earn it, you have to work hard. So the same thing here, we have to work hard towards our salvation, to earn 
life eternal, to earn this salvation. So let us follow Christ and pray and beg him and the Theotokos and all the saints to intercede for us, to support us, to help us, to earn life eternal. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.